go. All right. Clean that up right there. All right, so that goes. That goes. That is, ooh -wee. And now it's time for all the good stuff to go in. Hey guys, today I'm gonna reveal my family's 100 year old recipe for mava, mishawa, mahiawa, whatever you call it. It's that amazing umami anchovy sauce. It is phenomenal. And one thing that I'll say, this needs to be on the UN intangibles list. And if you watch this video completely, I am sure you will agree with me. So let's do that together, guys. Let's push for Mishawa to get on to the UN intangibles list. It's amazing. And we don't want this recipe to go away. What do you say? Let's go. These are sitting in water and some salt, iodized salt. And now we are going to wash. So this is just the first phase of the process. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that washing. Give it a nice rub all together. Look at that. Okay. Take that out. Squeeze all the liquid out. Put in the strainer, squeeze, strainer. Get all that good fish out, put it right in there. And this is number two right here. That good amount of fish. Ooh wee, you don't wanna let any of that go. Look at that water, so it's obviously lots of sand in there as well, you see? Cause that fish is sitting and is dry, so there's definitely a lot of sand in there. You don't want that, look at all that sand in there. You definitely don't want that sand, but you do want the fish. Right there, you get everything going there. All right, some more. Bit of a wash. There we go. Look at that. Wash it up. Good batch of fish right there, lots of water. And you drain and strain. Back over there. Get that stuff to go right there. So here we go. Soaked, salted, cleaned, and ready for the next phase. So this goes back in here. Look at that. Back inside. Look at that. All that stuff coming back. All that stuff coming back. There we go. Coming back into the water. Oh, found another piece. Of a different fish. You don't want that in there. Look at that. Second cleaning session. Let's go. All right. Clean that up right there. Seven times, mom, you clean? <laughs> seven times. This has to be washed seven times. Seven more. Seven more times after this. Seven more times. Ooh. It needs it and you gotta do it right. All right, we ain't gonna show you this seven times, but we will show you what happens after this, after you wash seven times and what happens after that, because you gotta keep this for two to three weeks, and then the next phase begins. There we go. So yeah, that is actually the same fish that you could put into a grinder and turn into 
powder. Oh, look at this. Look at that. All right, and you could put this on white rice and good like ghee oil on it. Pretty good, a little bit of lemon as well, some raw onions, fantastic. And also some of our local greens like what we call Ruwaid and Ruwaid is, what's a Ruwaid in English? Radish. Radish? Radish leaves. So the radish leaves, the white radish leaves, you could eat it with that, you could have it with uh, raka as well, fantastic, really good. But we don't do that to it. We turn it into this beautiful thing called mishawa, which is basically it's amazing anchovy fish sauce, which we have with eggs, and it's one of the greatest things in the world. I actually recently went to Bangkok, Thailand, took some of this with me, and was was frying eggs and then having that on top. Amazing. What, what do you call that, sir? Sahna. Sahna. There you go. That's what that is, right? So you need some ghee with that. You need white rice. Yeah. And that is uh, really good. I think kachumba salad. Woo! Kachumba salad, which is basically just chopped up uh, onions, tomatoes, lemon, pepper. Yeah. Nothing else. Woo wee! Beautiful. This is the smaller fish. And with this fish, this is the good fish to make the good or the great mashawa. If you get the bigger ones, you gotta chop the heads off, but this is a lot better. And you don't get it all the time. So the thing is that sometimes you won't find this fish, but. Go after this one if you can. They're super small, and look at that. Super, super, super small. People make it with other fish as well, but this is the one that you want to do, because that's the one that we do, and this is the greatest. Best masala in the entire world. That's right. Made by? Ma, right there. She makes the best masala in the world. In Italy and Portugal, they used to make garum. Garum? Whoa, okay. Uh, and they leave it for two months? They leave it for two months, yeah. Oh. So you mean to dry for two months or, or wash and salt? You mean salted for two oh, months. Oh, salted so for like two months. So like the fish oh. breaks down, there's an oh. en enzyme in the gut of the fish Ooh. that helps the fermentation process. Whoa. So even though it's dried, the enzymes are still like they're dormant, but then you hydrate them and they wake up again and the salt them. Hang on, you mean they learned from the Italians? From and the Italians or the Portuguese. It makes sense, they were there. Makes sense, makes a lot of sense. This is number three, guys, look at this, number three. You still got that. Okay, number three. This is number three right here, still got lots of work to do. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, tell me your theory once again. It makes sense because when the Italians or the Portuguese traveled, they came through the Arabian Gulf, the UAE and then Bahrain, Bandar Linga, Bandar Abbas. And all the little towns and villages. Oh. So, like that whole coastal area, that yeah. whole radius. And then it was just localized, you know. And everybody has a different version with the spices. Yeah, it's true that. The spices came from this side and the garum came from ah, this side. Ah, makes sense. Because makes the sense. Italians, they don't make it with spices. Oh. They just salt it, they leave it for two months. Yeah. And then they use that in cooking. But oh. the spices came from this region, this area. Oh, amazing, amazing. All right, still going strong. This is number four. Look at this water. Starting to get clear. We're heading into the fifth dimension. <laughs> the fifth wash, but look at that. All head. All head, oh. Oh, yeah. All right, next step of the process is to take that cleaned up fish, salt the whole thing. Two kilo of fish, one kilo of salt. Two kilos of fish, one kilo of salt. Let's see what's gonna happen, mom. Oh, so this is natural sea salt. So a little bit of quality okay. over there. Leave some of that salt for the top over there. So look what happens now, look at this. Now we salt it all up, now we salt it all up. You have to cover the top with the salt because if it's uh, sticking out yeah. and there's uh, nothing to cover it, that's when it starts to spoil and it starts to mold. Oh, so you fill up the top with salt. So you fill the top with salt so nothing gets in. Nice. Next one. Look at that, you leave a little bit for the top. There we go, these are the big jars that are going to house the cleaned anchovies and they're gonna be salted and then left for a few weeks. All right, so let's see. We get those big glass jars now and you gotta fill. Oh, that's gonna take time, Mom. Huh? 
Oh, is that boiling water? Yeah. Boiling water, right here. Boiling water. All the way up to pretty much the top. Give me that. Mom is pushing it all down like that. And a little bit Give more normal water as well. Right. Okay. All right, so look at that. All the way, flatten it all up. Some more water. Oh, you're just cleaning. Cleaning a little bit. Mom is cleaning that whole thing up because that fish will stink up. Oh, it's gotta be water all the way to the top. Everything has got to be completely submerged. You don't want any fish up on top. Let me get some more salt. So the remainder of the salt gets put right up on top. Oh, you also, look at that, the rim and the bottle and everything also gets seasoned with that salt. Look what goes on top right there. This is old school style, guys. We got a piece of cloth and then we've got a rubber band closing it off. And look at that, we got salt up on top over there. Look at that, that's this tough rubber band right there. We put something on top, we put something heavy on top of that as well to close it. And now we keep it in the sun for how long, Mom? For two weeks sometimes. And that is ready to go for two to three weeks and we will be back to film the rest of it. Thanks, Mom. So two days later, we're gonna open this up. Basically, look, here's what you do. Every two days, you open this up, stir, no more salt on the inside, you keep the salt on the outside, and this is so that nothing gets there. You don't want any bugs or any flies or anything like that going over there and laying eggs and things like that. So close it up, and that's how we do. So if this is the summer, you actually don't need hot water. You can just put normal water because you're gonna leave this outside and the water's gonna get hot in the sun. This is how important the water and the salt is. If you get one, one little fish, one little tail of a little fish, an anchovy, not salted, not in water, it's gonna rot and spoil the entire thing. So super important that everything is covered in salt and water and it stays that way. So that's how important it is. Salting the jar, she's killing the bacteria that's in the jar. She's sterilizing the jar. Mm. Uh, so a little salt up on top over there. Lots of salt up on top. There we go. We're picking that up and we are taking this and leaving it right there, putting it in the sun. And that's it, now we go back inside and I will film the rest of this, the rest of the process in two or three weeks. And there's a couple of phases left, it's not just one more process, but we'll do that a little bit later on, so I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm out, I'm gonna look different, of course, next time I film, because I probably have shaved, or might have not shaved, I'm not sure, I'm probably wearing something else, but it is a continuation of this process, so hang in there. What's up guys? We are headed over to That's where we're going. We're going to Rashidia because we need some spices for the next phase of this amazing sauce. And those spices need to be ground in a certain way. And we don't have that equipment at home, so we're actually heading over to a little shop that does the grinding of those spices for us. Now the spices are the most important thing of this whole recipe, it changes the game. And this is where the secret lies. So I'm meeting my mom at the shop and we're gonna grind all that stuff. And that's just a small part of the next phase, but I want you guys to see that as well. I'm driving around old part of town. And yeah, this is a neighborhood, it's right by the airport. It's starting to be renovated here and there. But yeah, it's close to home, so this is where we do all our stuff. There we go, a little cool. Oh, it's actually the inside the this then your destination market. Will be so, because uh, I see on the left. my destination is on the left, which means my mom should be here somewhere. Where is she parked? All right, I'll park some. Oh, here we go. Park over here. This is a great spot right here. All right, we're gonna get out of this car. I wanna say it's here. In here, there we go, mom is here. I'm on it. All right, so here we go, a bunch of these spices. 
korkum. Korkum. Koriander. 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 Felfel. 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 Açın. Got a masala hindi, cinnamon right here, going in. Mm -hmm. Black pepper. Black pepper, going in as well. Oh, red chili. And red chili. So that is the combination for us. That is our Mole. recipe. It's all the soft stuff. So this is really, really good. All right, there's so many things over here. There we go. That's a turmeric right there. Half kilo coriander right there. Hundred gram? Hundred is too much. Fifty gram. Fifty. Gram. Okay. I don't want to. Spice. No spicy, yeah? Cinnamon right there as well. Next. Hundred grams of that as well. Fifty. Fifty grams. Fifty grams of black pepper. That's it. That's the mixture. Fantastic. So that's what it looks like. You mix now, but. That is our spices right there. Take a look at that inside. That is it. That's everything right there. That's the spices that we need. Once again, everybody has their own recipe. This is our recipe. This is the way that we make it. And uh, yeah, this is amazing. So this is the next step. We're going to take that and that's going to be mixed with that amazing sardine in salt water that is just curing right now amazing okay we're also getting some of this some fennel seeds over here that's gonna go in there as well with all those spices okay so this is Mohammed. he's the owner of this shop and he's got everything over here so all sorts of spices they got coffee they got all sorts of nuts all herbal stuff okay we're gonna take a quick look at the little grinding machine as well Oh, this is where they're doing the grinding right here. They got a small grinding machine over here, and then they got the large grinder over there. So that's what they do. Do all the spices, and you get the quality that you want right now. Okay. Oh, oh a little bit of good. Very nice. Fantastic. Look at that industrial grinder right there look at all the spices that come out and things like that amazing thank you huh? Shukriya. Yeah. <coughs> Ooh, i got some of that spice in my nose all right we're good to go there we go that's that fish that we turned into our michelle right there they got some of that over here as well look at that that's a big one but yeah that's that's that you can get that over here as well Woo. all right we got it we're out of here let's go mom <laughs> Okay, that was it. I'm out of here. That was another step in the whole process. I told you guys, this thing is complicated and it takes a lot of time. But wait till you guys see the end result. It's so good. It's the one thing that I cannot live without. I just, I love it. It's one of the greatest things that you can have. And I gotta say as well, I've tried other people's recipes and I don't know none of it it comes even close to the way that my mom makes it so let's get out of here we'll see you guys at the next step all right here we are at the last phase of the mishawa making you either call it mishawa you call it mehiawa you call it mava whatever you call it this is the last phase you saw us do the washing you saw us do the bottling and the salting you saw me buy all the spices and now i'm going to mix up all the spices and add it to this but but look what's happened to this look at the fish right you have that whole fish and look at that it's all decomposed into this amazing umami paste looking thing and look at this water up on top over there that is amazing all that requires now is it requires a lot of spices we've already got the spices we've mixed them all up and it is ready to go in here for the last phase before it's ready to be eaten and it's one of the greatest things you can ever eat like i said you can have this on bread you can have this on uh, eggs which is the best thing in the world you can have this on um i mean anything really you could have it on rice it's just phenomenal so all right let's get started because i'm super excited about this the last phase all right okay the next first step is taking this and this is mustard seeds so mustard seeds and we are going to toast these mustard seeds first of all so we got a pot like that 
I'm gonna put all those mustard seeds in there all the way. Look at that. Look at that. Just a little bit of water just to get it a little bit moist. Look at that. A little bit more water. Just look at the technique. There is a lot that goes into this and anybody that enjoys an amazing mishawa just know how much sweat, how much love, how much passion, how much effort goes into making this. All right, now we are actually roasting these or toasting them. We did give them a little bit of moisture from that water. Look at that. So look at that. Oh, that smells amazing. Whoa, that is fantastic. It smells so good. So you do this for about 10 minutes. So we're gonna go and finish that and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, the next step is coriander seeds right there. We're also going to toast some of those. Coriander seeds right there, as well as fennel. That's the next thing. And look, you moisten that a little bit because it could burn very quickly and you don't want that to happen, right? We are toasting it, but just a little bit of that moisture, just for that one. This one is completely dry and just toasting it for that amazing toasty flavor right there. On the seeds over here, the coriander seeds, all you need is for it to get a little bit of color and then it's ready to go. So that doesn't take a long time. You know, that must have been something like two or three minutes long. Maybe four minutes. You see those colors? You see that? You see that on the side over there? It's turning dark a little bit. That's it right there. That is it right there. Woo! It is smelling amazing in here. Got this into this little plastic little thing over here. So let's get some fennel. Oh, let's get some fennel right there. Nice. So we, we're doing a kilo of this, a quarter kilo of this one, and a quarter kilo of this one. So I am giving you most of the recipes, not all of it, most of it, but you will be able to make this thing yourself. And the reason why I'm telling you I'm not giving you all the recipes is because there's certain things that it's just, you know, uh, muscle memory for my mom when she's making this. So I'm trying to get these things, you know, out of her so you guys have it 100%, but it might be somewhere like 90% or 95%. So just FYI. There we go. That's ready. All right. That's it. See, that's ready. Look how that, 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 that's now toasty, dry, steamy right there. All the moisture is gone. We got what we wanted. This one's pretty much ready as well. And we are ready to put these three together and then grind them to a powder that we need. Look at that color over there. Look, you got a little bit of darkness over there. Those mustard seeds. It smells so good in here. Just want you guys to hear the sound of this. So the fire is off, but these mustard seeds are still toasting and roasting. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. Look at the steam coming out of that, but you can hear it. And that's just what I wanted you guys. So look at that. Super dry the way it was when we first put it in there. All the moisture is gone, but it is now what we want it to be. All right, a little bit of a mix over there. And we're gonna turn this into powder. This is just a sample grind for you guys to see. We're obviously going to use a bigger grinder, but just want you to see what's going to happen to it. There we go. All right, use a grinder that will help you do this faster. Gonna sift this out because we don't want any large pieces in that thing we want the powder completely all right so that's what it's supposed to be like and next is going to be the mustard seeds also same thing again just to show you guys what happens look at that look at that 
here we go and that is the mustard seed right there as well fantastic that is also a powder all mixed together into that sieve look at that that's what happens next right there you get all the large elements up on top and then you get that soft nice powder stuff at the bottom look at that that is it right there there we go this is the next step so it's time for the fish to get the juices that we want we got some more powder over there that we've done so put that over here and it is time for this look at that you remember that salt that we put up on top look at that oh it's nice look at this Woo! let me just whoa that smells amazing right, we're gonna drop a little bit of the water we're gonna drop a little bit of that water look at that that goes and and we dropped a little bit of that water because we wanted the saltiness to reduce a little bit because obviously we put a lot of salt in there which was very much needed but here's where we're at now look at that that's probably like half an inch of water on top of all the fish oh and we give it a little bit of a stir like that look at that look at that Woo! that actually you know funny enough you think that that would smell fishy like crazy not like that at all okay so we're gonna take that concoction right now we're going to put it in here oh it's getting everywhere including on the camera oh look at that that is, ooh, wee. that is all over the place but hey got to do what you got to do so we get a little bit of that we put it into the blender and we're going to blend all right so blending happening right here put that on look at that all right okay and we go look at that look at that once again we're going to pick this up and it's going to go into another sieve right there we're going to we look at that all right look at juices on the inside we got a little pot down there as well and then look look at that that is just a, a super paste right there that is really that is All right, so we've added water as well because we want to lessen the thickness and obviously get all the good stuff through the little holes in the sift. We want it to be, you know, full of moisture as well. We don't want it to be dry and thick and pasty and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is thick, but we want it to be a, a moisturized, thick paste. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That is just fish everything like press against that get all the juices out all the good stuff this is it so this is our main mishawa syrup froth up on top i'm gonna add a little bit of water there as well Ooh. so this is two kilos of fish right there wow look at that that's so beautiful my mom is a perfectionist and she's gonna sift this one more time because she doesn't want any sediments any pieces of anything in there. So look at that. That's how much attention she gives to this mishawa. Get all the nice juices out of it and leave all the leave all the leave all the stuff. You know, I've been eating this all my life basically and I've never seen the entire process like this. I really did not know that this much effort goes into it. I definitely am going to I mean I appreciate it tremendously. Trust me, everybody that knows me knows that but I have a newfound appreciation for this amazing, amazing sauce and also for this craft, which is disappearing by the way. I mean, there are people that make this, but I honestly I know for a fact a lot of them don't give it this much care. It's not like this. Um, until somebody comes up with the machine that's going to make this. Mm. So I just learned something new. My mom just told me that 
Making a batch of mashawa with awa, they say, making a batch of mashawa is just like marrying off your daughter. The care, the love, and all the work, the intricate work that goes into making that happen. I, lo I love that. That's the first time I ever hear that, by the way. Here's where we're at, guys. Look at that. Look at the white froth. That is clean. So we're gonna do this. Oh yeah, a little bit more. And just in the end, a little bit of the way of the past, the original way with your hand to get every little bit, every little drop of juice out of that fish. And now it's time for all the good stuff to go in right there. Look at that. That's our amazing mixture. And then you use a whisk and you just whisk it all in, mix it all up. Now the potion is starting to take shape. Oh, that is fantastic. This oh, it smells wonderful. It is so nice and it's so, it's not potent, it's not strong, it's not fishy in any way, it's just nice. That's the only way I can explain it. Peeps, I'm gonna be honest. There's a few more ingredients which we add to the mixture, which is the family recipe. It changes the game. And unfortunately, I cannot give those ingredients away. But I gave you the gist of everything. I, I, I showed you guys how to make it. I showed you guys all the stuff we put in there, the bulk of it. But those few extra things which change the game for us, that's gotta remain a family recipe for the next thousand years. Let's go bottle because this, this process is still very cool. All right, let's do this. All right, here we go. So you gotta get yourself one of these. That is a traditional clay pot. And you will put this entire mixture and you say, Bismillah. Oh, prayer time when you fill that as well. All right, so you don't fill it up. It looks like it is something like three to four inches from the top. And the reason you don't fill it up is because it's going to rise in the next 24 hours. We're gonna close it up and just let it sit and cure. And that's what's gonna happen. So give it space, give it space to breathe because it's gonna come up. Oh my God, this is just absolutely brilliant. Look at this. You put this up on top and we're not gonna tighten this too much. It's gonna be fairly loose right there. So easy going. Lay it up on top and this does not go in the sun anymore. That's it. It's got a cure inside the house. Okay, just basically find any corner of the room or the house and put that in there. Now, we need another week for this to be ready and in this one week, every two days, lift up the top and everything, like open it up, get a, a spoon or what we do is a branch from a palm tree and just like stir. Every two days do that and, and you, you keep doing that because you, you want it to mix and you want it to cure properly. And when you get that layer of watery, fish watery thing up on top, it's ready to go. But in a week, we can start to have this. So this is a process that's taken now almost a month with everything that we've done. It's so important to get yourself a clay pot because it's part of the flavor that is created when you have all that amazing stuff in there. I mean, you could do this in another container, but I promise you this adds to the flavor and it'll just change the game. Get yourself one of those and don't skimp. So everybody that's watching this video, share, talk about this, write about this, and help me get this onto the intangibles list.